Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining me in the locker room on this June 16th. I'm Alan Locker. Today's show came together very last minute, but when I heard that the Bold and the Beautiful would start airing their Rome, Italy episodes today, I reached out to my old pal, Lauren St. Victor, and invited him here today to tell us all about it. The trip to Italy for the Bold and the Beautiful marks the first time for the show in its 36 year history. The episodes start airing today and go through Monday, June 26th. The Eternal City and its stunning architectural beauty will be the setting for seven episodes of a magically romantic storyline. The episodes also feature a glamorous haute couture Forrester Creations Hope for the Future fashion preview and a surprise performance by legendary operatic tenor Andrea Bocelli. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome my friend, Lauren St. Victor, to the locker room. Hello there. Alan, what's up, man? It's so good to you be know, here. You know, I wanted to have one-on-one -on -one with you, so I'm excited <laughs> this worked out. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Let's all wish Lawrence a happy birthday. Ah, man. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Wednesday, you. That did was it a big up. one? No. You know what? Last year was a big one. So I told my wife, let's just keep it low key. So, man, I was in bed just snacking for most of the day watching <laughs> television, and it was awesome. And then we went out to dinner um, afterwards. What'd you watch? I, Snowfall. I've been catching ah! up and binge watching Snowfall. I felt I, I I stopped like around season three just because of life. And then I'm like, well, I'm about to just jump in and just binge all of it. Oh, my God. I'm so excited you said that, Lauren. <laughs> it is one of the, my husband and I, loved oh, that so series good. and I, I got lucky uh season four interviewed um sissy saint his mom oh <laughs> man she's so good they're all good i mean i mean it's amazing and um oh rain edwards is the one that plays she played mel like his kind of like neighborhood girlfriend and she yeah. was on bold and the beautiful while she was shooting snowfall at the same time <sighs> Wow. So I was always like, I need to jump in, and then I yeah. jump in, and life happened. But I'm now oh, I'm just it's so funny because I don't talk about that show with m many people. But I think it's it was one of the most well done. Uh, it's so good, and if if you like Ozark, if you like Breaking Bad, it's like this fits in that world perfectly. One hundred percent stellar writing, stellar cast, uh, beyond so really. good, so good. <laughs> Was bummed, you know, when you lose a show, it's so like, oh, and it's so good. You don't want it yeah. to go anywhere. And you're just looking for the next, like, what's going to replace this type of show? And yeah. I don't you know. You know, we, we were watching the, do you watch uh, The Shy? I started it and then li life tends to happen and then I fall off. But I, I started it. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. We we liked that a lot. We 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 felt it got a little soft, like mm -hmm. storytelling. Uh, I would still go back. He, my husband, sort of lost interest. I, I yeah. would still like to finish it out. But I love that cast too. That was a great cast. Well, I'm I'm gonna finally jump into what I should have watched years ago, which is The Wire. It's almost me, time. It's wait, <laughs> tell me when you're gonna do it. I'll do it with you. I, I don't I don't have a date yet. I'll, I'll send you so a text. So it's funny because. I chose uh, The Wire and Oz mm. were the two I wanted to. And I, I, I started The Wire first, and it, it was a little harder to get into. It takes a while uh, to get into it. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to Oz first and loved it. But I, I, I need to do The Wire because I hear the yeah. same thing. I've started The Wire probably twice in <laughs> its, you know since it started. And they're like, you just got to get through it. Like all these shows, The Wire is up there. Oz, I watched as it came on. Oz is not the show you watch. Like, let's cuddle up before bed and watch Oz. Oz will give you nightmares. Oh, totally. <laughs> and another, I mean, both of those shows, the incredible cast. Oh, man. Boom, boom, oh, boom, man. boom. HBO changed the game with those shows. Sopranos, they they, they really did. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have to we'll have to talk about it. I, I, that is one I definitely am very interested to. You know, I was very late to Sopranos and... Me too. Could not stop it when I finally got to it. Me too. Me too. A lot of those shows, like I guess the binge culture wasn't around back then, but now you can just go in and just binge everything you want. <laughs> uh, tell Lawrence that Brandy says hi. I used to see him at all the events. Oh, um, yeah, Brandy. 
And, and Marnie Davis agrees with us. She said Snowfall will go down as one of the best shows of all time. I, I'm, I'm in the last season right now. I'm almost towards the end. I'm sad, but I'm excited. They, to see oh, you are in the last? I'm in the last season. Oh, uh, they, they did a, I think they did a bang up, bang up uh, job. It's sad because you, you kind of know without knowing there's only a couple ways this can go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and yeah. they're all, and all of them really aren't good. No, there's no good way. <laughs> there's this no goes. good. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Just Definitely. You know. Has ah, to end so a good. Way. Um, Rome, Italy, my friend. Yes. Rough, yes. rough life. It's so tough, man. It's so yeah. hard going to work, like having to take a flight to Italy to go to work. It's uh, so, your you know. first your first <laughs> European trip. Um, yes. Who told you the show was going to Rome? And and do you remember that reaction on your face when they told you? Yes, yes. I got a call from Casey, who's our producer, who actually directed our Rome episodes. And he told me that, uh, you know, we're going to Italy, we're going to Rome, and Carter is written into these episodes as CEO of the company. And I was, I had to stifle my scream, I had to stifle it, because I was like, I'm going to Rome. <laughs> and then I told my wife, and she was like, so when are we going? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very smart wife, Shay. Very smart. <laughs> so we, we, we worked it out with my parents to come to town and watch our son, and then oh. Shay came out towards the end of our shooting and then we we were in rome for a day and then we went to florence for a few I days saw the florence ah, both, both cities are spectacular it's it's beyond like i've never been to 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 europe before so i've never seen just old bc type of architecture next to the apple store right like, you know i i, I have i've never seen such a contrast of like they didn't tear anything down yeah. But you still have new buildings. It's it's it's, it's an amazing sight to see. And and that Colosseum is oh, just dude, like we got a wonderful tour of the Colosseum and they were telling us just not just the stories but how smart they were. Like they literally would open a duct or something and flood the Colosseum so they can have like a naval show and they were able to drain all the water out. So they can have like the fights and the animals and stuff. And I'm like, how did they conceive to build this back then? It's 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 beyond. And you go there and you walk around and how huge it is. It's yeah. I mean, talk about like gladiators, like all the stuff we're yeah. watching on TV, they were like doing it for real. Yeah. <laughs> that was their entertainment, was for real. It and, was crazy. And I, I know you like food food a little. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Just a, little a bit. bit. Just a little I bit. mean, pretty spectacular yeah. for that too. Man, and that that was what I was the most excited for. <laughs> to tell you the truth. And then I, you know, my expectations were just exceeded with everything else. But the food, man, the food was just you didn't have to go to a nice restaurant. You can just pick and choose wherever you want to go, just mm. point to it. And it's just gonna be amazing. And I love the culture there. Like lunchtime, everyone stops. It's not like here where all right, take your lunch now. I'll take my lunch now. We'll shoot to here. It's like, no, crew, everyone stops. We sit down and have an hour lunch. It was wonderful. What it was, was wonderful. It, you told me uh, it was an Italian crew. Did they speak English as well? Uh, some did. Uh, we had a wonderful um, first AD, and she kind of was like the one to like really bridge the gap of translation. Our cinematographer spoke English, but then some not so much, but like... The language of filmmaking and storytelling, it's all the same language. And yeah, yeah. Um, and that language also is so beautiful. I love uh, it. I had to speak some Italian, and I was like, this is going to sound bad. <laughs> I apologize. From the New Yorker. <laughs> From a New I know, it's going to sound off, but no, it was wonderful. The people were it's, wonderful. It's one of the languages I would love to speak. I, 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 you know, I took like a class or two. I can't speak, but... I love uh, that language. It's beautiful. Yeah. Because it's 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 smooth and aggressive. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's 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 pretty, but also has like this strength to it. Uh it's a wonderful language. Did anyone who flew out from Bold speak Italian? Any of your cast or uh I think some of my cast 
can get around it a little bit. I know a tourist in K, he's lived in Europe. I, he's born and raised in Europe. So I think he can understand some. And of course, our foreign um, publicist, uh, David Gregg, he can, he can get us around. But I think a lot of us would just <laughs> kind of like figuring it out as we went. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to get around. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I my first time when I told you in '92, mm -hmm. uh, I I had a friend who lived there, and I went to Rome on a train with one of his friends because he couldn't take me, and that yeah. friend didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Italian, and I spent a day on a train going <laughs> uh, not to Rome. We went to uh, to Venice, and it was really the most you know magical experience because. We were yeah. able to communicate. You, you, you draw, or you, yeah, or just body language. Yeah, you start to it, really pay attention to the person when you can't. Yeah, understand it, their it, words. it's a phenomenal experience. Europe is. Uh, I assume you'll want to go back. Yes. Well, <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to leave. It was, if it wasn't for my son, Shay and I, but my my son and my job, we we would not <laughs> because Florence. We went to Florence after after Rome. And that, that's just the Italian Renaissance. So there's just a whole other level of just romance and just artistry that's in Florence that was just beautiful yeah. as well, just as beautiful as Rome. So we're just like walking around the streets, gelato. One city and after rooms. another is, oh, as, yeah. it's is so as hard. spectacular as the next. I, I completely, completely agree. So um, what was it like, you know... <laughs> You used to go with Guiding Light to Peapack, New Jersey. <laughs> you know, what was it like being on the streets of Rome shooting? I'll tell you, man. I, I love being on location for real. So on Guiding Light, we switched our format and we were in Peapack. We were always outside if we're shooting outside. That's my preferred style. I love it. I think outside and the nature and the acting, it, it just everything, it just feels more real. Lighting. Lighting. Gorgeous, yeah. And it just works. And you're really sitting on a bench or you're kind of throwing rocks during your scene. You get to do just things that you can't do in the studio that feel more natural. So shooting in Rome, it, it was, it's funny. It was, exa it was exactly like PPAC in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Moving just as fast. And then you have the elements, like I'm giving this speech and we're really looking at this fountain I'm talking about. And then and we're taking in the side. I, I loved it. I loved it. But yes, very, very similar to my pee pack experience. <laughs> Did you have a favorite locale that you shot in? Ah, uh, man. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the Piazza Novana. It's, it's, I, I might have said that completely wrong. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty much this massive fountain like the living room of rome they call it like and, and it's where the hope for the future preview and press event is and that and we walked around we walked around after a shooting like every day me and a couple actors and it's it's a sight to see and to, to see it and be wowed by it and then come back the next day to shoot there was crazy it was crazy that that was i mean every location that was pretty beautiful um I don't want to give any story away, yeah, but yeah. there's there's some places we go to specifically for what that place represents. And you get to see the characters actually experience what you would experience being a tourist going to to a specific uh you know monument or place. It must have been a bonding experience too for all of you as a oh, cast. Man, I mean, and it reminded me, God in light, it reminded me when we went to um Universal. <laughs> You oh, know, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and because we're all there, we're all staying at this hotel and we're all shooting scenes around the park and we're not shooting scenes. We're just walking around having fun. And it was the same exact thing. Uh, I think our second day there, uh, Jackie, who plays Steffi, she wasn't working that day, but she came to set and I got finished pretty early and we just sat around and stayed. Like we got we got chairs, stayed, watched our act, our fellow actors shoot their scenes. The Coliseum's right there. We're like, we're just gonna hang. Like, what else are we gonna do? No, it, it was a wonderful. Yeah, I saw your pictures at the Spanish Steps. Uh, right. Then, I mean, and I have more pictures. I felt like I was already being obnoxious. No, showing all the Italy's pictures. A, keep showing more from Italy. Uh, um, 
Did you get to see Andrea Bocelli perform? I did not. Ah. I did not. I, I, I missed <laughs> that. That's it's exciting, just, though. It's heartbreaking, but it's very exciting. I mean, that's what's very special about Bold and the Beautiful is that although it lives in a, in, a, in a fantasy world of romance and all the dramas that soaps have, like we do go to real locations. And you will see real people who are in our real world stop by on our show. So it's kind of like this awesome meta experience that Bold has. We were in Los Angeles. We actually take place in a real city and we go to real countries and we have real performers come in as themselves. And that, that's something that's really special about Bolt and the Beautiful. I love that. that it's so great. And then I, they can pull this stuff off. I'm like, I don't even ask how. How did you do that? I don't even ask. Just uh -huh. expect it to happen. Uh, I assume you encounter fans in Rome? Yeah. Oh, man. Now, I've already heard that uh, we were really big in Italy. I've heard, like, we're like the Beatles out there. And you hear it, but there's no way you can actually, like, understand what that experience would be like and when we got there like off the plane just and they call the show beautiful there so like beautiful 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 and the most amazing fans they were waiting outside our hotel whenever we went they i mean you might see some of them because at our locations they're there watching us shoot and they're so gracious like there wasn't a single fan that interrupted there was never a single fan that was disrespectful it's they were just happy we were there and it was pretty awesome to see that's why I like fans. those Italian people. <laughs> ah, man. No, it was great. It was great. Because, you know, sometimes you never know if you meet a fan who hates your character and doesn't distinguish you from your you know, character. <laughs> it, it's interesting because Bold is seen in, in many countries. Yeah. But, but Guiding Light was only seen in Italy. Wow. So I'm curious. Did, do you know if you... I did you? get a Remy. I did get a Remy. Yeah, because wow. over there, Guiding Light is called Sentieri. And yes. The light, I think. Yeah. I didn't realize it was only in only, Italy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guiding Light was, right. World Turns was in Amsterdam and, and Guiding Light was Italy. Yeah. We should have went to Italy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have went to Italy. We, oh, we, that's We should have, cool. you know, back in the day i saw that you had a press day in rome what was that like was it that, all italian press yes yeah that was that was pretty wonderful because we all had a translator so like by the end of the day our translator knew everything about us because we're getting asked these questions and she has to like interpret as us and i had a wonderful translator she was so awesome and it was really cool man it was a little overwhelming because i've never done this before yeah. And like, you know, it was like a six hour day of just photos. And then you sit at a table with five reporters, you're done. Another five reporters sit down and you do the rounds. I loved it. I just did, had no idea what to well, expect. Well, that's how, I'm, you know, one day when you're doing movies, that's how it will be in the movies. That you sit Getting down prepared. for a round. Yeah. That's how it goes. And what I loved was I made sure that even though I didn't understand what they were asking me, like we we always made eye contact. Mm -hmm. Like I was never looking at my translator waiting for her to translate. I was like, I want to feel your energy. And they were the same way. They were the same way. That's awesome. Yeah, it looked yeah. like it was a, 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 lot, a lot of people. Um, your son, was that the longest time you had been away? Yes, yes. <laughs> And we have like nanny cams around the house. <laughs> so I was just checking in just to see him, you know, and the we're like, it's like a 13 hour time difference. So that's already screwy. Oh, because you're doing it from L.A. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, we got in at one o'clock in the morning. I can make I can FaceTime them <laughs> because <laughs> it's they're fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was the longest I've been away from him and. It was a little weird, man. It was weird. At, it was a, after about four or five days. I was like, this is getting weird. Yeah, sure. But then I had some it gelato. Cha it changed your routine. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> then you had a pasta meal and you're like. And oh, I was good. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I have some later. wine. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, yeah. 100. No, it was. <laughs> but a nice getaway for mom and dad. Yeah, that was. That was our first out of the country 
vacation with just us probably since our honeymoon. Wow. Like we did, we've done a lot of family trips and Caribbean and cruises and stuff, but just like me and Shay on a plane out of the country, <laughs> it's been like 15 years. <laughs> the pandemic stole a couple of years. So, yeah, it did. We, you know. we all have lost a few, so we don't yes. know what those are, but yeah. Right. Complete, yeah. Completely agree. Well, and I it was nice. Believe, what were you going to say? It was, like, it was nice because she, she came in on our last day of shooting. So every night we had a dinner, but this was like a real special dinner. So she was able to come oh, to the final to the dinner and like, you know, she knows a lot of the cast and, and everyone already. So it was nice to have her there and kind of like experience just how much we bonded over this trip. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And all that stuff. Yeah, it was great. To share it, to share it with her. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, I talk about this all the time, how Guiding Light was a family. We were a family. It was more than just a show. So many of us still keep in contact for that very reason. <laughs> And Bowls and the Beautiful, it's very similar, man. It's it's, good. It, it, it's nice to end up in that same place because if it was not, y- you might not enjoy it as much. And I'm, I'm spoiled because I don't know any other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you better hope it continues that way. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I won't know what to do. Like, we're all in Italy and if we're done shooting, everyone goes to separate ways until tomorrow. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it is very well, well your little guy's gonna turn five in August. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Well, what is he into these days? Uh, he I loves mean... he loves his cars. Oh. Loves, uh, we got to get him. He's just physically active. He's a he's a little athlete. He he graces the monkey bars like a trapeze artist. That's so it, it's time to get him into something. It's time nice. to uh, figure out what would be the thing. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, movies. No, he likes music. He takes after his mom. So, like, you know, music and the nursery rhymes. He, 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 if I put on something, a cartoon that doesn't have music, he kind of just tones yeah, it out. Love so, that. any cartoon, Mickey Mouse, whatever it is, it has to have like a nice, some music. Oh, so you might, you yeah. might have a musician, huh? I think so. Musician athlete and everything else give it give give him everything well, give him all you know, he follows in dad's uh athleticism i'm trying to keep up no i'm i'm following him what he's doing i'm like i know i didn't do that at your age you, 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 you <laughs> definitely didn't i i feel like he's ahead of me nice. age wise oh yeah oh yeah so sure. I guess you got to have time with with your parents since they came out too. Yeah, yeah, that was really great. And um, they moved to Texas from New York. Oh, okay. They retired. Their pensions aren't taxed. <laughs> you know, they were able to buy a home without you know having to to take out any loans or anything like that. So they they moved. Well, they were to, a little closer Houston. your way. Well, that's also why they did it. They wanted to be like in the middle between me and my sister. So <laughs> they, they're starting to like benefit from being in the middle. They they're good parents. <laughs> oh yeah, they, they didn't pick one or the other. <laughs> they, <laughs> He's right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was really great having them here, and it's always great having them I, I come to this that. crazy world of ours. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I know you're not currently writing for B and B with the ongoing writer strike. But yeah. I have to say a big congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Oh, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> How does Thank that you. feel? Surreal. Feels surreal. Feels weird. It's like I'm nominated for writing a TV show. Because in your head, you're always like, I'm starting out. I'm an actor, an actor. And this wonderful opportunity presented itself and I was able to learn and, and, and progress talk, in it. Talk about you know, the opportunity and how it came about again. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was so, honestly, it was organic over a period of time. When I first uh, met with Bradley Bell, before I even had a role on Bowls and the Beautiful, he talked about the little web series I made back in the day, Wedlocked, a lot during our meeting. Like, he watched it online, and he enjoyed it, and he enjoyed the writing of it. So from then on, when I joined the show, we would just meet up and just talk storylines. And not for my character, just the show in general. And I would always ask him a million questions. Flash forward like a few years later, and he asked, like, hey, do you want to write one? I'm like, well, before that, we wrote a web series 
for Bold and the Beautiful called The Roommate yeah. that was like side by side. I think that's also what built the relationship. Then he offered, hey, you want to write a sample script? You want to write something? And I did. And I wrote a few. And then over the last two years, he said, hey, do you want to do this again? I said, yeah. And it's been consistent now. Before it was like right when here, right when there, still learning. And are you and doing breakdown or script when you are script. writing? Script. script. Breakdown. Our wonderful uh, uh, co-head writer, Michael Minnis, is... Uh, does the breakdowns and that is a job. <laughs> I don't know, I, like I don't I don't think fans understand what it takes to have a new show on the air five days a week for 52 weeks a year. Like he's always writing breakdowns. Outlines are always being well not now because of the strike, but yeah, they're right. all like there there isn't yeah. uh and you just celebrated story. nine thousand. Nine that nine thousand, which means <laughs> like there's no hey, let's just take three months, recalibrate. Yeah. No, there's like if you take a couple weeks, you might fall behind. <laughs> so any any uh breakdown writers, any outline writers, uh man, they have my utmost respect. That job is whew. before you started this with uh Carla, before you did wedlock, had mm -hmm. you had writing been in your head that you wanted to give it a whirl or just just stuff for myself or things that I might have wanted to shoot um what was very beautiful oh, eventually like things you wanted to yeah create. well yeah guiding light was such a wonderful experience for me especially as a young artist because first of all everyone was giving and loving and, and willing to talk to me and answer all my questions <laughs> <laughs> but also when, when we transferred to the PPEC style of handheld cameras and it was such a learning curve for everyone, but I got to really see how they adjusted. Whereas before they're making it in the booth, they're in their offices. Well, now we have, it's the doors open, the windows are open. We're all trying to figure it out together. And I got to watch and learn and, 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 and see how the writers changed it because our scenes got shorter and our scenes got more, less monologue and more back and forth with dialogue. So I learned so much just from watching them adapt and transition and answer my questions. So that gave me the confidence to like, well, let me try writing stuff on the side and let's see what happens. So I would say the bug started there. Yeah, I love the <laughs> yeah. guiding light, the, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it really does, it really does. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um, do you know what, episodes were submitted for the Emmy? I don't. I have an idea. I imagine it probably would have been a lot of, because we have this really crazy and amazing Sheila storyline that was going on last year. Where <laughs> yeah. she, Kimberlyn Brown. Oh, oh, just a beast. Just, just <laughs> eating everything. So, we, I mean, and you, you enjoy almost, writing for her? Oh did. man, yes. I oh, and I also would like as an actor, I get a little cheat sheet because I get to be on set with the actors and I'll just start saying, So what do you think about your character? Like what do you like? I just start getting insight. And not that it's anything I'll use, but it just gives me an idea. Oh, what happened? I think we lost Lawrence temporarily. There he is. <laughs> you got too excited? Sheila doesn't like me talking about it. Yeah, sure. Sheila, <laughs> she's coming for us. Watch out. So I imagine it would have, it, it might, I honestly don't know, but I feel like that whole storyline with Sheila and yeah. Finn and Finn and Steffi getting shot and we think Finn's dead, all that stuff when they're them reuniting in the Monte Carlo, I feel like that is. That's like best show in my opinion. <laughs> like just nail this what's trophy. Your, what's your process? You get a breakdown. Oh man. Um, so for me, I read, of course, all the outlines and the ones after mine. And then it's I fun my... knowing, isn't it? It's, but it's also dangerous. <laughs> They'll ask me questions and I have to act like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, I really loved reading breakdowns. 
love. I, I love it. I but when you're yeah. around your fellow actors and they yeah, know you I, know. I, I yeah, I know. They know you know. <laughs> they, um, they'd like to know too. <laughs> every now and then I might be like, don't go to McDonald's this weekend. <laughs> you might, your shirt might be off. Just little birdie. No big but, Mac uh, this week. <laughs> no big Macs. But uh my process is usually I try to finish the script, finish my first draft in like two days. I get the first draft hammered, get it done. And then I spend the next like five days, four or five days, depending on when it's due. Usually it's a week. And I kind of do like nine different drafts. You know, the this first, second draft is like, does it suck? <laughs> let's, let's fix it sucking. In the third draft, I'll read the individual scenes. So let's say uh, characters Liam and Steffi have a scene. I'll read all those scenes back to back just to make sure that the story is flowing and flowing, it just, yeah. just flows. Like if you just watch their stuff, it should flow right. effortlessly. And the next draft is I'll, I, there's, a, there's something I have on my computer where I can listen to it. So I'll play it so I can hear it, like a table read, just so I can hear it. You know, sometimes Is that you, like artificial intelligence reading it. Man, it's bare minimum. It's like me just co- selecting oh, it you're and reading. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's I thought bare... there was like a program that's reading. I wish back. I'm waiting for it, <laughs> <laughs> but I just need to hear it out loud because sometimes in my imagination I can fill in blanks that aren't there. <laughs> so I, but hearing it and closing my eyes and imagining it, I can like almost see the scenes play out. Then after that, I'll go back and read the scripts that are before mine, and then read if there's a, usually there's no script after mine, just the outline to make sure everything is flowing, and then. The next one is just making sure it's tight, making sure it's timed. And then the next one is just to make sure it's just as smooth. And one more read because I'm crazy. <laughs> lot, just to make it, you know. Yeah, but, it, it, but also understanding that it's never going to be perfect. And that's why it's going to go towards our editors to just also add in their touch. But yeah, about nine different drafts over the course of five to six days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's fun though. I love it. It's fun. It's because acting, which I also love, is wonderful because it's collaborative. You know, you do your homework, you show up on set, and you play the game with your fellow athletes. Whereas writing, it's like the lights are low. <laughs> Got my cup of coffee, and it's just me and my imagination, just by myself. Just so it's like it's wonderfully isolated which is very different than the other side, which is all about communion and being around people. So it's nice to have both. Would you like to write a larger, yeah. you know? Oh yeah. Down the road. A, a film yeah, script, yeah. So, you know. I would, I mean, I, I enjoy writing. I enjoy storytelling and I enjoy everything that I'm learning here because we say it about acting all the time, but it goes for directing, it goes for writing, it goes for producing. Soaps move so fast. It's such a machine that to do anything else would just feel like you're slowing down <laughs> to think. And so, so it's like if you go anywhere else outside of here, it's it's gonna feel so much. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be a cakewalk, but it's gonna be like you guys have how long to write this script? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know. Yesterday, I interviewed for Grant Alexander, uh, Michael O'Leary. And, and two actors who they started with in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Um, and one of them is Judy Evans, who's on Days. And so they were sort of asking the difference of what it's like shooting Days. So, days moves fast, man. So, But even for you, how does Bold move compared to what Guiding Light was doing back in the day? The first version of Guiding Light, I would say, we had more rehearsal. Like, like we, we used to do, we don't do morning blocking anymore. We, we, we kind of stopped doing that uh, after the pandemic. If you want to say we're post pandemic, but after the stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at Guiding Light, we didn't just have morning blocking. Like we went to the rehearsal hall, we would rehearse. And then we got on set, we blocked it for the camera. So we had a little bit more rehearsal. How I imagine they say Bold and the Beautiful was back in the day. Um, so I would say Bold and the Beautiful is faster that way. Until we get to the pee pack years, <laughs> nothing is as fast as that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, because we didn't have morning blocking, we didn't rehearse. 
the cameras were handheld so they can find us easier. They didn't like cross each other's paths. Our sets were four walled, so we had more freedom. So that was super. So by the time when I got the bold and the beautiful, I'm like, oh, we're slowing down again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going man. back. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we yeah. moved. P-Pack, we moved, man. Yeah, speed. You never knew when it was going to rain or <laughs> snow. You had yeah. to move. <laughs> Today, we had a monsoon here today. It would have been a bad day in P-Park. We still would have shot. <laughs> we still would have shot. <laughs> um, tell me who, how would you describe Carter Walton today? Man, I think Carter has evolved since his affair with his boss's wife. <laughs> He's evolved a little bit. I think um, he realizes what that was and I think the biggest thing for him is because we had the whole Carter Quinn love affair the will they won't they will they finally get together and they finally got together and Quinn left him she left town and she said you know she did it for on his behalf she knew he wanted a family and all this stuff and the kind of person she is she couldn't give that to him but for Carter all he I think really hears is the person that I risked everything for the person that I was desperately in love with left me. So was any of it real? So I think before where Carter would jump in so fast, he's a little bit more chill. Like he's with Katie right now. And I think old Carter would have proposed already. He <laughs> said, how about we move in? But now he's just really enjoying the time, enjoying getting to know someone. You know, he has, he was with a, a character named Zoe. She broke his heart and that kind of spun him in a downward spot, which ended him with Quinn. And I think Quinn breaking his heart kind of like brought him back to his senses with a bit more maturity. And the second chance he had, like, you know, Eric Forrester is, you know, the owner of Forrester Creations, his son Ridge, who's co-CEO, they forgave Carter and embraced him back into the family. So to feel that love, like everything Carter did before is because he felt so unloved because of what happened with Zoe and even Maya, Carla's character, like women that he was in love with that wanted to be with somebody else ultimately. And now receiving this forgiveness and from these people that are like, you messed up, you broke our hearts, but we're not going to throw you away. So Carter's in a very good place. Carter's in Italy. <laughs> he's in, he's, he's in, in a very good place. He's in a very good place. You're, you're <laughs> correct there. Um, you just celebrated 10 years. I mean, is that weird? I mean, is it blow your mind? Yes. A, because in my head, I'm like, I'm not 10 years older, am I? <laughs> am I? But no, it's, it, it, it is so surreal. And they put together a package of like kind of Carter's highlight reel. And it's just, it blows my mind. That was 10 years ago. It feels like it was yesterday. Well, then, as like, you were naming the women, can you put up your fingers and start naming how many in 10 years? You know what? Carter's been a good boy. Well, this is what's funny. <laughs> so for the first eight years, it's really yeah. just Maya for the first seven years. The last three years, Zoe, Paris, <laughs> Katie, Quinn. <laughs> 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 wow he, he got a like he was just a one woman man and then yeah. when it didn't work out he was just like i'm okay and then the last three and a half years he <laughs> just not even three no the last three years it's been four different women and one of them quinn was like almost three different times and paris was two different times so if you want to count like the different times it's been like probably seven different interactions. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, do you, I assume you have to write for yourself sometime. All the time. What's All that like? Time. Well, first, sometimes I feel like I'm being trolled because if you know me, you know that, as you said, I like to eat. I like to enjoy <laughs> myself. Yes. And having your shirt off and all abs and stuff means that you're not enjoying yourself. <laughs> so I would get these outlines, Carter's shirtless. And I'm like, it'd be so easy to slip a shirt on him right now. <laughs> <laughs> but then they, they would know that I did it. So it yeah. wouldn't work. No, That's but writing cool. for myself, it's, it's, it's very easy. Not because I know Carter, but usually 
I know the storyline that I'm in. Yeah. So that's that's the part of the scripts that require less research, less homework to do. I just kind of have to get out of my head as an actor and, and see it the same way, see all the characters. Because when I'm writing, I'm just as much Quinn as I am Carter. But where I'm like writing Sheila, you know, I'll spend a half a day just on YouTube doing all the research I can, see how she ticks. Same thing with the other characters. Um, I, I, I'm not sure you can figure out how Sheila No, <laughs> no. Well, Sheila's very interesting. Sheila is such a complicated character, but so far in my experience, at least I'm bold and the beautiful, not young and the restless. It's almost like if you just give Sheila the love she wants and don't make her feel as though she has to defend herself, she doesn't get too wild. Like when she first came to the show, she wanted Eric. If they just let her have Eric, like half of this stuff wouldn't happen. Now, if, if y'all would have just let her have a relationship with her son, people would not have gotten shot. I'm not <laughs> saying her logic is good, but it, for her, it comes it's, down to a lack of love. When I spoke to Kimberlyn, it was about love. Everything is, but yeah. so yeah, you got, you got that right. Just give her love. We're all safe. <laughs> you know, 10 years there, you know, Bradley not only gave you Carter, gave you the writing, you know, who um, have you learned the most from? Would you say it's him? I would say yes. Because, you know, we just had a, a little meeting where we just sat down and kind of talked about story again, just talking about story. And for me, it's like, I'm not writing a show, I'm writing your show. So getting in your mind and seeing how story works and seeing what you want, seeing your desires, seeing your hopes and dreams is informing me so much as an artist because Bold and the Beautiful is a family business passed down from father to son. So it's not like I'm talking to the 30th executive producer that you know went through the revolving door. And that's fine. You know, that happens on other shows. Our show is unique where it's like, I'm not just gaining Brad's perspective, I'm getting his father's perspective, the guy who made this thing and also made Young and the Restless. So it's just an amazing privileged position to be in. And the fact that he was willing to kind of sort of mentor me and let, let, let me ask him, I ask him a lot of questions <laughs> and he answers them and he's willing to. And he, the questions he are, are, are how we all can learn. I mean, yeah. it is really. You and know, you get to go to the source. Like as artists, we all have our ideas, our interpretations, and that's why we're hired. They hired us for our interpretation. But then I can also go to the guy who fever dreamed this idea. Like, where'd you get this? Like, you know, it, just, it comes to him. And I'm like, well, why? How? Where? What? And then I get to ask him, like, what makes a good bold and the beautiful story? What's not a bold and the beautiful story? What and and it's probably all gray, but I get to see it from his point of view. So absolutely, Brad. As well as, you know, of course, my co-stars. And, yeah, yeah, but that's but, yeah. amazing. Um, you know, going back to, you know, how you were describing your experience at Guiding Light and, mm -hmm. and just observing. Oh, yeah. Who would you say you learned from the most there? Ah, man. Um, as far as as an actor... I mean, I can't even say one person. I mean, they were all so amazing. And I, <laughs> I would ask them all the question and someone look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I'd be like, so what's your method? Like, what's your approach? And I remember Kim Zimmer, she said, always have a secret. I always have a secret. Even if it's never on camera, I have a secret. Sorry, Kim, for telling your secret. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ron Reigns looked at me like, just learn the lines and say them. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at me like, what do you, but I was just so fascinated with all of them. And then, you know, coming in and seeing Tom Pelfrey, a guy around my age, being so free in, in, in a, in a arena that felt so like we're moving so fast. The cameras are here. It feels like it could feel very rigid. And to see someone my age, haven't been, who hasn't been here for that long, be able to find freedom in it. I was like, oh, wow. And then, I mean, Jill, man, our one of our, our head writer, Jill, she was, she wrote this scene and this, this is what changed everything for Remy. Like they, I can put a line in the sand from when my character evolved into what he would be. Uh, my character was in love with a woman named Tammy and she got killed because he didn't like pick up the call to help her. Mm -hmm. And if he would have been there, maybe she would not have gotten killed. 
I wound up beating up the guy who did it. I was putting him in the hospital. All that stuff happened. Flash forward like a year, a year later, and I'm really finding my groove, finding my way, finding my comfortability. And Remy's with Ava, uh, Michelle Ray Smith. And we just had awesome. We just had a great time. Uh, we had awesome chemistry and we just really enjoyed playing. And uh, there was a scene where Carter sees, I'm like, Remy, wow, I saw the multiverse. <laughs> Remy sees <laughs> the dude that did that to Steffi just like in Main Street. And we have this big fight scene. This one I love. We always had, I had a lot of fight scenes on Guiding Light. <laughs> and afterwards, it kind of like just moved on from there. And I went to Jill and I said, we never got to hear Remy like have a moment of deep regret in regards to what he did to Tammy or what he didn't do. You think I can have a scene? And she was like, yes. And she wrote me this beast of a scene with Ava in the jail and I'm getting out of the cell and I just kind of have a legitimate breakdown over Tammy. And from that point on, it felt like they trusted me with vulnerability. So after that is when we had uh, Remy and his baby dying. After that, we got to see different colors because I feel like that scene showed them, oh man, this, he does have more that he can he can give us. But that was Jill. Jill was like, she, she heard me, she understood it, and she agreed, and then she wrote the dopest scene. The, it's so interesting. And that that's so great for you to actually have experience in now being a writer because mm -hmm. there are so many scenes at Guiding Light that came about like that, that we could help, you know, just fix a wrong that might've happened decades earlier by just, mm -hmm. you know, one scene or these, yeah. these, these small scenes usually ended up being so powerful, like an added scene that wasn't yeah. a part of a script. And it gave, it gave Remy the why. Like, why is he acting the way he is? Why is he doing what he did? And it filled in a gap. And then it also let me as an actor have the challenge of having to do this scene and then seeing that I can do that. <laughs> you scene. asked for it. Oh man, when I read it, I'm like, this is amazing. How am I gonna do this? <laughs> now I gotta do it. Ah. But because of that, I think, I think they trusted me with, with much more heavy lifting. And a lot, and Remy changed after that, um, which, I, which I enjoyed. And it's, it's really all because of her. She could have easily said, don't tell me how to write the show, and, you know, <laughs> which I'm sure happens, but not, not at Guiding Light, not at Guiding Light, you know. I love that. that, that mm -hmm. That's amazing. Uh, you know, speaking of Tom, a uh, dad himself now. Yes, he is. He'd be a great dad. He'd be a great crazy guy. and yeah. and murray okay seeing murray's so, success what's crazy is this i've already seen like the trajectory is crazy and someone actually posted a scene ivana did was it ivana, oh, ivana did? did yeah yes she did she posted <laughs> <laughs> i said murray the i don't care was... whatever happens to you i don't care how big you become i don't care how many emmys you win we were hosing poop off of each other in feedback new jersey <laughs> in our boxer shorts <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's funny because I, uh, you know, very aware of what's going on with Murray and saw his episode of The Last of Us and ah. uh, tears, man. But tears. I, I haven't watched White Lotus. So my wife and I binged it like a month ago. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. It, it, and I'm it, leaning in watching like. The, his mind work and just the 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 addiction and the the yeah. idea of being someone that has to present something that's perfect when you're falling apart. I'm like Murray, killed it, yeah. killed it. Ah oh, man, it was so it was, it was. And then him and Tom were both nominated. It was it was so surreal. I'm I, like I this, this is wonderful. It, it's so wonderful and good people, you know, like yes. to see yes. the, the success happening to to good people. Really. Good um, people. But that show as well, wasn't it so good? Because you don't even, like, where are we going? What's happening? Every episode was just shenanigans in the, in, in the best way. Like, it's a show that doesn't have to end because it's just in these people's 
lives and they're all broken and ridiculous. No, that show. Are you going to watch season two? I'm about to binge it. I'm, I'm behind. Yeah, you, you should. You know, when uh, when I spoke to Murray before it, it aired, he told me that Mike White literally, like HBO said, we need something during the pandemic. And he wrote it like that. Oh, that, that's, that's what wild. happened. That's what happened. Like in like two weeks or something. Like it's really like a short. He. Yeah, See, that, that makes me want to stop writing, Alan, because I'm like, <laughs> you did that in two weeks. Like, how does anyone measure it, it, up with that? I might be wrong or I might no, be right, but I, it is a very I, I, short period. HBO needed a show and, and then he and they shot it during COVID, stuck at a hotel by themselves. That's wow. So they're like, we need a show where we get to be in the bubble. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. basically and the first season, you know, and then because it was such a success. Season two came around. And we know we can do it because he could write in this stuff in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's 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 so impressive. It's it's overwhelming. It, it, it is. Like, and that wow. cast in the first oh season God. was brilliant. Every single oh one God. of them. Like, so flawed. <laughs> and you find yourself loving and hating all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some you just hate from the beginning to the end. 100 percent and i wouldn't have minded being stuck at that hotel yeah <laughs> beautiful hotel just a lot of shenanigans shenanigans <laughs> a lot of shenanigans. shenanigans do you have a dream role you'd like to play <laughs> oh. Wait, i'm trying to point to it there, oh, he, there is. he is i knew that yeah <laughs> superman oh yeah oh yeah that's the dream but honestly, uh, just just be right. It manifest it. I will. I will. You don't got to tell me twice. <laughs> I'll write my Superman story. But um, just being a part of good story, man. Being a part of good story that 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 continues to connect with people. And that was that's what was so beautiful about Italy, is that we're just not in LA in some studio making stuff that we really love and enjoy, and it kind of goes out there and. If we wanted to, we can go online, but that's also a slippery slope. <laughs> Don't go online, <laughs> you know, because you hear everything. But to go to Italy and see the people you're impacting face to face. So we're going to have a fan event in August, I believe. Yes. And we're going to have hopefully that same experience. We actually get to see the people. Where? In L.A. or? In L.A. Oh, in L.A. Nice. Yeah. I can't remember the dates. But, well, uh, just in case you're available, the weekend of October 8th in New York mm -hmm. is the first time they're doing the uh, bowling event again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Man. Or autism and the Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund that they created in Jerry's name. I met Jerry once. He, he left Guiding Light before I got there. And I met him at the event in such a sweet awesome guy i wish i got a chance to spend more time with him and get to know him he, he was a he was a really good egg yeah. well you know guiding light you you know we met in 2006 <laughs> 17 don't don't put a number to it <laughs> don't put a number i mean we're too young for that um that's wild you know thinking back how has lawrence changed over those years Oh my gosh. I think changed a lot, but also haven't changed much at all. Um, <laughs> I think I've become more grounded in myself. You know, I still experience a lot of, I think we all kind of experience that fake it till you make it imposter kind of syndrome thing. But being in New York, fresh out of school, getting on a show like Guiding Light, where like, like, how long the show has been in existence, you're like a tiny little star in a galaxy. Like you don't even make up barely the solar system when you look at it as a whole. That can be very overwhelming for, for a new guy coming in. Like, man, everyone knows what they're doing and it's moving so fast. So you kind of feel like you have to be more. I think now I'm getting to a place where it's like, who I am is good. Don't have to reach, don't have to push where I am, where I am is good. And there's still a lot to learn, but it could be done with ease. As opposed to back then, I had more of a, 
I got to get it all. It's got to be perfect or else it's all going to fall apart. Maybe being a dad kind of got rid of that. Like you just learn patience. You have no choice. Um, so I would say I changed in that way. But I'm still a kid, man. <laughs> I'm still a kid. I'm That's glad. never going to stop. <laughs> well, you know, it is as 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 we do age, you know, you, you're more at peace. I mean, you're married now. You weren't married then, you know. Like you said, you're your dad. Um, I, I also loved how you just talked about because I think it's so important when we have an opportunity, like you got onto Guiding Light right out of school, mm -hmm. and you were, you know, using that and asking your fellow cast members for advice. The way you, you know, what's your method? You know, yeah, as, as they might have left, but it <laughs> it is the opportunity. You know, I was a page at ABC and I watched everything and I mm -hmm. wanted to know how TV was made because yeah. I had the opportunity in front of me. It's you, you know, those opportunities don't always come along and you, you know, you were using it because you love what you do. Yeah. And a healthy understanding of the deficit I was carrying. And I say healthy because if you're not learning, like, what are you doing? And if, if you're ever on set or have the opportunity to talk to people and you ever take it for granted, stop. Like, you may not get an opportunity just to ask simple questions, questions that might sound dumb, but you get to ask and you get to learn. And that is something I would say. I've always had that, like, childlike curiosity in regards to all of this because I still don't really know how... All, I don't know how a outliner, breakdowner, honestly... <laughs> does that that every day <laughs> every day and i'm fascinated by it i'm fascinated to know like how do you do it what's your process and i haven't had a chance to ask michael in full i've asked him bits and pieces at our anniversary parties and stuff like that but i always go like how well i don't know if uh like bold does this i don't know that any show really does this anymore they used uh -huh. to like back in the day head writers wrote like a Bible of like six months or longer mm -hmm. worth, mm -hmm. you know, think about what that takes oh to God. outline an entire, you know, half a year. Six months. And, and, and I think we do that to a degree as far as like knowing where things are going, but as far as like giving the writers a platform to jump off of every day. <laughs> Crazy. Man, yeah, I mean, it, it really it's what, that you know, that's why the WGA, you know, is in yes. place, and yes, and, and writers deserve their fair share for yes. sure. Because... I don't think people understand, and maybe they do, or maybe I'm being a little bit much, but like everything you watch, whether it's bold and beautiful, the Game of Thrones, it's an idea that was plucked out of thin air. Someone had a dream one day and wrote it down. Like literally, it's it's that not tangible thing. And then we the the writer's excellence when he makes it tangible and it feels like, oh, it's always existed, right? And he's like, no, it was a daydream one day. Uh, this amazing writer got bored doing the dishes and said, Jon Snow, Ned Stark. <laughs> oh, let me write this novel. Like it's like like that's the brilliance of it. And Everything you're watching, we're so used to it. It's, it's easy to take it for granted, but no, like these ideas and the inspiration, they're just. I cold. you just made me think. I we just finished um, season one of Queen Charlotte last night, and yeah. one of the actresses is Ned's wife. I think. Catherine. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Another show that's the 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 the, the unfortunate red wedding. Uh, I screamed at the television. <laughs> Spoiler alert for all you people that are behind for like eight years. But Absolutely. Oh are you God. still uh, the spokesman for Coliseum? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, How I did am. that come about? Uh, I was just doing print modeling gigs. And, I, and, and I, one of them was a job. And I just hit it off with everyone there. They're just really That's great awesome. people. I mean, just good people. And we had fun. And their sets and, are and fun. You might be into fitness a little. A little bit. You can't tell by what I want to eat all the time. <laughs> it was, it was just a um, little bit. What is a typical day in Lawrence St. Victor's fitness routine? It's changed because <laughs> I don't have the time. 
Now I'll, I'll try to work out six days a week, but two of those days, just a bike ride. Get on my bike and just ride. Put on my AirPods, have some music, low enough where I can hear the traffic <laughs> and just kind of groove. And then two days, I'm, I lift weights, uh, kind of like three days a week, lift weights, and then get on the stair mask and get on the elliptical. I'm trying not to beat myself up too much, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then, you know, if it's a shirtless thing, that's yeah. where... <laughs> you, you'll work a little extra. Work a little extra. You eat a little less, work a little extra. <laughs> yeah. That's how that works. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, you know, your dear friend and the vice president of communications and talent relations at Bold and the Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful Eva Bassler, is fighting for her life battling cancer. Tell us about Ava and how fans can help. First, she's not just like she's our, she's like our den mother, right? She literally is love and light. She is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And I learned over while we were in Italy what she's been fighting. And there's a GoFundMe to help with the medical costs. I have the link up on YouTube for everybody if they can. A dollar yes. goes a long way. Dollar goes a long way if you can't. Tell a friend about it, but she's a, a really amazing person and she's made it her life mission to really support and care for people. So let's show her some support and care. Yeah. I love that. I love you, my friend. You are love you, you, man. you are love and light. You oh man been since the day I met you. You're you you are a good egg. You too. Not everybody gets me to do uh uh Michael Jackson dance for you. Yeah, I know. I, I was looking what picture <laughs> I wanted to post today, and I almost took the picture with the hat on. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man. Oh, that that time in in uh, Mississippi, Biloxi was quite special. That was probably the most transformative experience I've ever had with the group of people. That level of bonding that level of the work we did. Like we came out uh, just a different, for me, I guess, I know we were a family before that, but that was my right. first experience of like, we're a family. Yeah, you know, so the, my the bonding experience. And I did to see your 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 sister uh, in March for the first time in person in a long uh, time. Man. <laughs> I haven't seen her in person came, as well for two Came long. to an event and uh, it was so, so great to see her in person. She is so, I mean, and honestly, like when I talk about guiding light and family, like the first day I met her, she was my sister and I was her brother. And she kind of really set that course, you know? It could have easily been not, but she came in and she was so loving, so gracious, my little brother, and it just made it effortless. And then Kim Brockington, you play, I, I still call her mom. <laughs> like I say, mom, I remember, <laughs> I remember she, she, I put something on Instagram and she said, like, congratulations, my son. I said, thanks, mom. And my real mom was like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is my mom. She's my stage mom. She's like, what is all of this? I'm like, no, but we were a family. We were a family. Still yeah. are a family. Still are. My yeah. friend, you have a great weekend. I hope you still celebrate your birthday. Have yes. some more cake this weekend. I will. <laughs> I have Father's Day too. I got a bad. Yes, class. happy having, Father's Day. Thank you, sir. I'm having all the goodies. Uh, that's awesome. I yes, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there and happy all the Father's fathers Day. Out there, yes. Lawrence, thank you so much for doing this. Bold and the beautiful weekdays. Don't miss Rome, Italy. How could you? <laughs> now through the end of the month, but bold and beautiful every day. And yes. I, I can't wait to hear Andrea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Bye, my friend. Bye, man. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Join me next Wednesday, June 21st, when Lisa McCourt, a best-selling author and a proud mom of a transgender daughter who serves as, as the president of her local Florida PFLAG chapter, she will join me live. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Click the like button if you like today's episode. And turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And remember, you can stream The Locker Room. Just search it on your favorite streaming platform. Have a great weekend. And as always, everybody, stay safe and happy Father's Day.